Hello friends, this video on is metal around us pure part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com no more fear from exam. The next is the colloidal solution. See colloidal best example is the milk and or air, air itself is a colloidal solution. Air typically in the case of uh, rainy season because it gets some moisture, the humidity is more. See, in collateral solution, the particles are uniformly spread throughout the solution. So it is a homogeneous. That is something we know. But this is also debatable. Uh, some people say it's heterogeneous because actually if you see the particles are very small size and they are not uniformly distributed. But actually from the naked eyes, you feel this uniformly distributed. For example, you take some water and milk, dissolve it. You feel it's all uniformly distributed. right? So we call it as a homogeneous mixture. Particle size is actually between um, actual solution and suspension. So in actual solution we have seen that size is uh, of the range 1 nanometer like less than that. Here we have seen the size of range 1000 nanometer. So this colloidal is somewhere here. It is between 1 to 1000 nanometer. Okay. So since the size is again small, less than 1000 nanometer, so we can't see the particles from naked eyes. We can't see, but these particles as well scatter beam of light. And this effect is called Tyndall effect because if you pass the laser light, these will scatter the beam of light and you can see the path of light here, right? So this is scattering of light. And this is called Tyndall effect. Okay, name after the scientist who discovered this effect, Tyndall effect. And a good example is air. If you see, uh, sometimes when you're in dark room, the light comes from one window or some hole. You see this kind of light, right? Why? Because this is again, if air is a, a colloidal solution, the light is actually scattering, the external light is scattering, is getting scattered. So this is the air, let's suppose this whole thing is my colloidal solution, right? When the external light comes, it gets scattered, the light gets scattered. And that is a Tyndall effect. This is also example of a Tyndall effect. So with this we can see that air is actually a colloidal solution. Okay. Here also it is pretty stable. Particle is, uh, I mean, if you keep it for a long time also, the particles won't settle down. So we'll see that in the properties. But let's understand that colloidal solution, the particle size is in this range, one nanometer to 1000 nanometer and shows Tyndall effect, okay, scatters the beam of light. Here is a good example of colloidal solution. If you talk about the Tyndall effect now, so if you have this, uh, this, uh, this is my colloidal and this is my pure solution. So in solution, if you put pass a beam of light, you'll not see the path of the light here. The light will enter here, it will come out here. This path will be blank, you won't see any difference. But in case of colloidal solution, you'll see a path of light here. Why? Because the particles will actually scatter this light and you will see a path here. Okay. This is Tyndall effect. So we talk about the properties of uh, colloidal solution. We have discussed this. Let me write one second for you. This is homogeneous. Okay. This is particle size uh, is uh, big enough to scatter beam of light. Is big enough. To scatter beam of light. It is called a Tyndall effect, and they do not settle down when they left undisturbed. That means it is also stable. If you mix milk and water, and then if you leave it for one day or so, you won't see the water. I mean, milk getting settled down, right? And it can't be separated using filtration process. You take a filter paper. Any, and try to pass the whole solution, you'll see that the filter paper will not be able to separate because uh, filter paper will not be able to separate the solute and solvent because the solute particles are a little small here. Right? These particles are small. Uh, particles are small enough that you can't see from naked eye. Big enough to scatter beam of light, but small enough that can't be seen from naked eyes.
okay but you can actually separate them using centrifugation uh, yeah centrifugation you can actually set separate them centrifugation uh, is a process where actually if you see if you keep if you boil the milk okay do one thing try this activity in the home boil the milk and then keep it up for two hours what you will see you will see a layer this is a milk ball let's suppose and you boil it and you keep it for two hours you'll see a layer of cream on the top of the milk on the top surface of the milk you'll see a layer of cream why the cream has come because the cream is actually in cream is the main colloidal particle which is dissolved in the milk right if you take out the cream it becomes uh, toned milk that has less concentration of cream cream is the main colloidal particle but the cream is lighter since it is lighter and you have boiled it right and then slowly uh, the vapors comes up and with that the cream also comes up and it get deposited on the top or you can use uh, some centrifugation technique that also with that also you can actually separate the cream and the water right the milk colloidal particle and the water but typically if you keep it uh, without doing anything it will not settle down it is stable to separate it you have to apply some extra method in case of suspension if you keep it for some time the the suspend the particles the solid particles will on its own come down but here that is not the case so we talk about the collide you talk about the dispersed phase and dispersion medium so in case of solution we were talking about solute and solvent here we talk about dispersed phase and dispersion medium right so typically here my solvent is a dispersion medium and dispersed phase is solute but we use this term dispersed phase and dispersion medium so dispersed phase is the particle which is dispersed and dispersion medium is the medium on which you have uh, these particles right so now based on the dispersed phase and dispersion medium we actually classify this collides into different parts types similar to solution solution also we had uh, solute and solvent and based on the physical state of solute and solvent that is solid liquid or gas we classify into nine types here also we will classify into some type based on the dispersed phase and dispersion medium this first phase and dispersion medium are typically uh, the terms used as solute and solvent but only for collides okay the moment you think of collide think of bulk so here the red particles are my uh, dispersed phase and the blue are my dispersion medium okay so let's see the classification of the collides based on the physical state of dispersed phase and dispersion medium so if you see here so we don't have nine classification we have only eight classification see here one two three four five six seven eight so we don't have gas in gas gas in gas is not there because if both are gas typically we get solution because the gas particle itself are small right if the both particles are small you get solution you don't get collides so typically you have eight types of collides in solution we had nine types of solution something you can remember here okay so we talk about example for example dispersed phase is liquid medium is gas so liquid in gas the major chunk is gas we have some liquid example is fog right the majority is gas but it has some liquid particles or cloud or the mist the second is solid in gas majority is gas you have some solid example is smoke if you see the smoke particles from the factories it has all the sulfur carbon particles right or the smoke coming from the vehicle if you just keep your fingers near the exhaust of the vehicle don't touch it it will be hot you will see that the smoke particles will actually put black color on your finger and that black color is nothing but carbon carbon particles and carbon is solid right so a good example is smoke from automobile so these are uh, collides and they are called aerosols they have given different names for these kind of um, collides gas and liquid mostly you have liquid but you have some gas for example shaving cream mostly it is liquid but it will have gas bubbles liquid and liquid a good example is uh, they call they call it call it emulsion and the good example is uh, milk milk is a good example where the collides 
I mean dispersion phase and dispersion medium both are liquid. Water and the actual milk particles both are liquid or the phase cream. Solid in liquid. So example is mud. Okay. Gas in solid. Good example is foam. Uh, this foam, right? Liquid in solid. Good example is cheese butter. So you have actually the whole thing is solid, but you have some liquid particles there. Solid and solid. A good example is this uh, colored gemstone. So you can see from here, uh, liquid and gas was this fog. Solid and gas was smoke. Gas and liquid was shaving cream, or you can say the cream which we uh, the foam, the froth. The soap froth or the froth in the cold drink. Liquid and liquid is a good example of milk. Solid and liquid, a good example is uh, mud or paint itself. Paint has some solid particles that is dissolved in the liquid. Okay. Gas and solid, a good example is foam or sponge. Liquid and solid, good example is butter and jelly. And solid and solid, the, the good example is a colored gemstone or the milky glass. Okay, so these are the classification of colloids, only eight classification. Just think or just see things around you. Try to classify them. Do you think it's a colloid? Do you think it's a solution? Do you think it's a suspension? So with that, you'll get a fair idea of what the particle is. Okay? Most of the thing around you will be a mixture only. You'll find very rare pure substance. Pure substance are rare actually, in front of you. Whatever you see, the drinking water, uh, the tube light, uh, the computer, the pen, pencil, everything is a mixture. Right? So just imagine this, this, just think about it and just imagine what are they. Let's take some questions. The question is uh, how a solution, solution is also called sol, please remember that. Uh, solution, suspension, are different. Sol or collide actually. Sol is also called colloidal solution. Right? Sol is nothing but colloidal solution. So let's see the difference. One is sol or colloidal solution. The second one is solution. And the third one is suspension. Okay, so let's see the difference. The first one is we know that uh, colloidal are homogeneous. In fact, it's a debatable topic. Some say it's heterogeneous. Solution is for sure homogeneous. Suspension is heterogeneous. Okay. If you talk about the Tyndall effect, it's colloidal solution, yes, Tyndall effect. They show solution, they don't show. Suspension also show to some extent. Colloidal, they are stable. Solution are very stable. And suspension, they are not stable at all. I will say very stable. Okay, these are okay type tables, and uh, they can't be the solid, the colloidal solution can't can't separate. filtration will not help you. Filtration will not help you. Here also filtration will not help you, but here filtration will help you to separate the solid particles. Okay, example in this case will be milk plus water, or even if you can take blood and water. In fact, blood itself is the example of colloidal solution, right? In this case of solution, you can take uh, common salt and water or sugar and water. Suspension, a good example is mud and water. Or you can take even sand and water. Okay. Let's take one more example, numerical. So it says uh, to make a saturated solution, 36 gram of uh, sodium chloride is dissolved in 100 gram of water. So 36 gram of sodium chloride, so my solute is 36 gram. Water is solvent, solvent is 100 gram. So total I get solution as 136 gram. So this you can write first. Now see the question. 
So saturated solution 36 gram of sodium chloride dissolved in 100 gram of water at a given temperature. Find the concentration at this temperature. We know that the concentration is dependent on temperature. But this data will not use. This is just to make sure that we have to find the concentration at this temperature. So concentration we know is nothing but mass of solute by mass of solution. Please note in here it is mass of solution not solvent into 100 that is 36 by this is 136 both say gram into 100 percent is gram gram cancel so we solve this we get 26.5 percent approximately so that is the answer okay so now we know different kind of uh, mixture we know what are solution what is uh, colloidal solution what is collides actually what is uh, suspension now let's take some of these mixtures and try to see if we can separate them thank you visit examfa.com to watch more videos attempt free online tests get free study materials find tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again